Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you for tuning in to today's video in which I am going to be sharing some of the new additions to my wardrobe from over the past few months. Right, so starting off with item number one and you guys would have already seen this because I featured it in my what I'm excited or I'm looking forward to wearing in autumn video and it is the khaki green trench coat from Kos. It is the most beautiful trench coat ever. Now what I love about this one in particular, and this was actually the kind of winning factor that made this one the new addition to my wardrobe, and that is the length. Now I'm five foot nine, so I do sometimes struggle with finding coats and trousers and anything that requires just the right length to fit in the way that I want them to and to fit in the way that they have them fit on the models, for example, on the website. Now, that's why I often look at costs primarily if I'm looking to add new items, in particular outerwear or trousers to my wardrobe because I know that they carry the kind of length that I'm looking for. So this is exactly the length that I was looking for in a trench coat. On me, it falls sort of mid to lower calf length, which is perfect. I prefer, you know, a longer length trench. I want something that's gonna cover the majority of my body. Now the fabric is 98% cotton and 2% elastin. So it's not actually as thick and starchy as just a normal cotton. It does have a very, very slight element of stretch to it and it's machine washable, which obviously is a winning factor. It's just a very, very minimal, there's no bells and whistles to it, it's just a standard trench coat, and yeah, it's just something which I think was a really good kind of colour option to add in something slightly different to black and there's actually a lot of navy on my rail here, but it was just adding in a slightly different colour to all the other darks that I already have in my wardrobe. But at the same time, it also sits in nicely and goes with the majority of things in pretty much everything that I have in my wardrobe already. Right, now while we're on the topic of trench coats, I would like to introduce you to trench coat number two. I've actually worn this in a lot of outfits recently because the weather hasn't been the best. It's been a bit gloomy and a little bit chilly, so I've been wearing this quite a lot. So if you haven't already seen all the outfits that I've worn this with or worn this as part of recently, they will be coming up because we're shooting and filming a lot of this content in advance. I'm not entirely sure by the time you're watching this what you will have seen and what you won't have seen. But there's lots and lots of outfits with this coat coming up. And also I have a video coming up, I believe next week, which is a five ways to wear this trench coat. So stay tuned for that one. Now the fabric on this trench is different to the khaki green trench. This one is actually a wool and recycled polyester blend. Now, I know that in previous videos and over the years, I have spoken about my mad hate for polyester. And I, I have to admit, yeah, polyester is not my number one love when it comes to fabrics. However, there is one pro to polyester and that is its crease factor, or rather should I say it's anti-crease factor. Polyester is actually very resistant to creasing, which is why it's used in a lot of suiting or why it's often blended with wool like this, for example. And this is actually quite a hefty wool blend as well. And the polyester is recycled, so I kind of feel like I can let it off. But another pro of polyester is that it's a lot more fluid. So I actually prefer the movement of this to the cotton trench, just because the cotton trench tends to stay not rigid as such, but it doesn't have a lot of flow to it. Whereas this one, you can just see the difference. It's so much more sort of floaty, more elegant. It just has a nice kind of sway to it, if you will. Moving on to item number three and it is the impossible to get your hands on New Balance 550s. Now I actually already have these exact shoes in the green colorway. I managed to get hold of those earlier on in the year. However, I had been taunted, if you will, by the navy colorway. And because I have a rather large amount of navy in my autumn wardrobe, I thought navy, 
would be a good option. So I managed to actually get these ones secondhand. I bought them off a guy who had literally wore them like once around his, he called it a fork or I assume that just means his driveway. And yeah, so they're basically brand new. I mean, I've actually worn these a few times, but they're basically brand new. Now, the reason that these 550s are so hard to get your hands on is because they were actually re-released as part of a designer collaboration with Armelion Door. Now this collaboration in the sneaker world, trainer world for us in the UK, has been a very highly anticipated collaboration and a very popular collaboration for the last few years. I would not deem myself as a full sneakerhead. I am what I like to call a selective sneakerhead because you could talk to me about Nike, about Adidas or Adidas, however you want to pronounce it, and I don't get excited. But if you bring up New Balance, you have my full undivided attention. I am 100% a New Balance geek. Simon takes the mick out of me at any given opportunity when I'm wearing any of my New Balance because he thinks they are trainers for middle-aged dads. And you know what? I am more than cool with that. I am happy with that association, to be honest with you. I love the retro vibes of New Balance. I love their comfort. There's nothing that I don't love about a pair of New Balance. Now, there are a few slight differences between the Amelion doors and the normal 550s, and that is the color of the leather. They're slightly more creamy, more of like an off-white, whereas these are a very white white. And also this little front panel section here, which is suede on the normal 550s, but on the Armelion doors, it's leather. So they're actually a little bit easier to care for, but they come in a lot of very similar colors. They come in the green, the navy, the, I think it's called salt, which is black and they also have some really nice color combinations with yellow in there as well. Now, I don't know what the sort of availability of these will be like by the time you guys are watching this video, but I promise you I will do my best to locate any of these wherever I can because I know that there's so many of you guys that are trying to get hold of these, and I will leave all of that information down below in the description box, but don't forget to look secondhand, but Grand. Right, moving on to item number four, and this is, again, something you would have already seen. It is the Lulu Studios CCAS Cable Knit Jumper. And again, you'll have seen it over on my Instagram because I've been wearing this quite a lot recently because it's an item that I haven't actually packed away in my packing. This is an item that will stay in my sort of now suitcase. It is very thick, very chunky, and yes, it is quite heavy, which is why I don't have it hung, because I don't want the shoulders to lose shape, and because it's quite an open cable knit, I don't want any of those fibers to stretch and any holes to start appearing, because it is already like quite holy, it's a very sort of loose knit. But yeah, it is a jumper which, and I'm not sure if it's this exact style, but it's a jumper which I saw from their collection last year, and I fell in love with it, put it on my wish list, thought about it for a year, and came back to my wish list and decided it was still very much one of those items that I wanted to go for, and so this year I took the plunge and decided to buy. It's 90% wool and 10% cashmere. So for me personally, I don't have any intolerances to natural fibers. On me, it is very soft. I would not have said it's itchy or scratchy. It doesn't irritate my skin in any way, but it is just beautiful, cozy, cuddly, probably not the kind of jumper because it's quite oversized, probably not the kind of jumper that I would wear underneath a coat unless the coat was very oversized because it is super chunky, but for sweater weather, for autumn season, yes. Now this is also Oecotex certified under the green label, which means that the textiles used to manufacture this garment have been tested for any harmful chemicals and have been manufactured under a sustainable and ethically responsible way. Right, moving on to my fifth new item, and it is these Hunter welly boots, which are quite tricky for me to hold, so I apologize. So these are the tall, refined, slim boots. They are welly boots, Wellington boots, rain boots, whatever you want to call them, but they are a slimmer version in comparison to the original Hunters, 
which I find are quite chunky and also because I have quite large feet and very slim skinny little legs and not very voluminous calves I find that they gape quite a lot around the calf region so therefore that's why I prefer to go if I'm going to go for tall then I prefer to go for the slim refined option. Now these ones also have really subtle logo on them at the front here so I actually think that these are a really easy boot that you can wear like in the rain with just a normal outfit aside from if you're dog walking or going on a country walk or wherever you might naturally wear wellies. I feel like these have a slight sort of fashion element to them. Now these were actually bought as a replacement for the same pair of wellies but in black gloss which I had and featured in the what to wear in wet weather or what to wear in the rain video that I filmed last year. I think it was around this time last year or it could have been earlier this year and those I actually purchased but I actually bought them as this matte black colour and they sent me the wrong colour and I kept them just because I needed a pair of tall rain boots and actually I didn't end up wearing them so it was a stupid decision because of the gloss. I just, there's something about the gloss that put me off. So I did actually recently sell those on Depop and then I used that money and put them towards the actual pair that I wanted. Lesson learned, I should have actually just sent them back and got the ones that I originally ordered. But hey ho, we all live and learn and now someone has a nice pair of gloss wellies that they got at a discounted price because I'd already worn them. On to item number six and I feel like it wouldn't really be like a new in my wardrobe video without some cashmere in here because you all know I love my cashmere. So this is my first experience with Cos cashmere. I do like to try high street cashmere because I like to kind of assess it and see how it fares in comparison to perhaps some of the more premium cashmere brands that I've bought from in the past. Um, and this, if I'm going to be honest with you, I think first impressions were it was a really nice cashmere. It's got quite a nice weight to it. It's not super thin. However, I have noticed over the days or over the last couple of weeks that there have been a few like finishing touches like bits of thread that are stuck out which I think is just one of those things with high street garments in general even slightly more sort of better quality brands like Cos and Arquette in comparison to low-end brands but I think there's just sort of little niggles that I find in the garment that I just think Mm, well that's just because it's high street however it was 135 pounds which I know it is a lot of money but in the grand scheme of cashmere that's actually not that bad because this is quite an oversized and long length jumper so you're getting a lot of cashmere for that price and also it is GCS certified cashmere which stands for the good cashmere standard and this is an independent standard for cashmere which aims to improve the life of not only the goats but also the farmers and farming communities and the environments in which they live. And moving on to my next item which I know many of you have been anticipating the grand reveal of and it is what's in this bag. So it was a few weeks ago now when Simon and I were invited to go to Bista Village uh, by Designer Exchange, who are a company that sells, and exchanges as well, might I add, designer luxury goods that are pre-loved. So this is a second-hand but grand scenario, but for now, you guys are gonna wanna see what I bought. Now, before I show you what I bought, I just wanna say that this was purchased with a gift voucher that Designer Exchange did give to me in order for sort of providing some coverage of the pop-up store. Without further ado, here she is. This is a Celine Edge. Naturally, I managed to sniff out some old Celine. So this is actually a navy and black duo and my goodness, I did not know I needed this in my life, but I'm so glad that I do. Now it's quite a thick sort of bag from the side. It has quite a bit of depth to it and it just has this one handle on the top, which is just sort of positioned on one side of the bag and 
contrary to popular belief, there is actually quite a bit of room there for having with the bag in terms of like the shoulder drop. And I've already worn this with a trench coat, which I know isn't a wool coat, so it's not quite the same, but there is still enough room. So this is a bag which you can still wear on your shoulder or you can carry by hand. So I'm not gonna go too thoroughly into all the sort of features and stuff, cause that's something that I'd probably do in that review video, but it's a really good bag. It's very elegant. It would make a very nice work bag. Cause I think it's quite smart, quite chic, as I said, quite elegant. And yes, I will leave a link below for Designer Exchange so that you can browse some of their other bags and accessories and clothes and all of the good stuff because they do have some really good stuff. Right, moving on to the penultimate item within this video. And again, it was in the How I Plan My Autumn Wardrobe video that I mentioned that I wanted a pair of navy wide leg trousers. So these are, I think the style of them is called Restin Restinga, Restinger. I have no idea how you pronounce that. I have no idea what it means, but they're basically wide leg navy tailored trousers. They're from Lulu Studios and they're they are 98% wool and 2% elastin. So again, they have a teeny tiny bit of stretch to them, but not a lot. But I think that kind of contributes to the flowiness of the fabric. They are high-waisted and they are a very wide leg. They are a little bit wider than the House of Dagmar ones, which are more of like a straight leg. These are definitely a wide leg. And the thing that I actually love about these in particular, I have not had to take down. Oops, I totally missed that. Missed it again. Let's try third time lucky. I have not had to take down the hems, which have... What's that? I'd say about an inch and a quarter worth of hem there if I needed any playing room. But I find, because I already have the Tekaroa trousers by Lulu Studio and I found that those were just the right length for me, if not perhaps a little, a smidge too long, but that's fine because I can adjust trousers. So these ones again are a really good length and not ones that unlike the House of Dagmar ones, I had to undo the seam to give me that extra inch of inseam and leg length. These I haven't had to do that. And I think that's why essentially I chose these instead of the House of Dagmar ones. And moving on to my final item, which is another gift, by the way. So disclaimer alert, this one was a PR gift and it's from the brand Pollen. Now, I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly because there is an accent over the E and so therefore I could have got that completely wrong, but I'm gonna say Pollen. And if it is incorrect, please do correct me down in the comments below. So this is a brand that you might recognize from, or you might remember from the Minimal Bag Brands video. And this was one of the brands that I referenced that I was definitely considering purchasing. But to be honest, because we're moving and everything, I kind of have put a lot of these things on the back burner. But it was a brand that I looked at and I was considering purchasing. In no way did I create that video in order to invite lots of free stuff my way. That's not how I roll, and I know that most of you will know that about me. Um, but the brand did catch that video, and they reached out to me and asked if I would like to try and test drive one of their bags. So I had a look at their website, and actually this is, I don't know, I can't actually even remember what I spoke about in that video now because I had so many brands. I can't remember if this specific style was one of the ones I mentioned, but when I had a look on their website and I was choosing which style I wanted to go for, I saw this and actually when I clicked on the product, I saw that it had been worn crossbody and something about this bag gave me the row slouchy banana vibes. Now, obviously I haven't gone for black because I still have got my heart set on the row slouchy banana, but I went for beige, which is a color that I actually surprisingly don't have many of in my bag collection. And what I love about this, this is the Numero Dix bag. And what I love about this is that it comes with two different straps. So currently I have got the shorter length strap on there because this is how I've been wearing it. 
and this can be worn as a slightly shorter crossbody. Now I've got this on, let me just check, I've got this on the longest option, so this can be made shorter on this strap, but there is a longer strap, so you could wear it as a longer crossbody, or you could wear it as a longer um, shoulder bag, or you can wear it as a shorter shoulder bag. There's lots of different options there, but I definitely say that this shorter strap is my favorite, and this is how I've been enjoying wearing this bag, which is very much like the row slouchy banana bag. It has that similar kind of shape to it. Granted, it's not the biggest bag in the world. It's not like incredibly roomy inside, but definitely as like a good kind of just fit your keys, a lip balm or lipstick, phone and wallet or card holder, purse, coin purse, whatever you choose to keep your money in. I think those essentials would fit pretty well in here. It's just gonna be sort of bulkier items that are not necessarily going to fit. So if you carry like a reusable coffee cup, you'd probably be better to have one of the collapsible ones that would fit in here a little bit more neater, like something from Stojo. But yeah, it's a really good little bag. I've worn it about two, three times already. And yeah, it's been really good. Right, there we go. I have exhausted my rail. How many items did I have? I had nine items there. Now, I was gonna say, I might potentially make another one of these videos for winter, but I'm not entirely sure because we're probably gonna be spending the majority of our time doing home renovations. So there is gonna be some more home content coming your way, but I promise, I will not let fashion drop by the wayside. I will keep up with the fashion content as well. Remember next week, there is the five ways to wear the navy trench video coming up and lots of others which we've already pre-filmed as well, along with, fingers crossed, so long as we move, an empty home tour coming your way in the next couple of weeks as well. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you all next time.